Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. My last video was about the best civilizations in 1 vs 1, so I think it's only natural to now look at the worst. I did cover this topic a couple of years ago, but there have been some pretty big changes since then, with four new civilizations and several of the weaker ones in the past having been buffed quite a bit. This is always a controversial topic because no one likes to hear their favorite civilization is one of the worst. But to keep things as objective as possible, I'll be using the online win rates for ranked 1 vs 1 Arabia games over the last three months. I'll be including all ELO ratings because there just isn't enough data to break it down by skill level, and including games of all abilities gives us a little under 150,000 games to analyze, which is a little over 8,500 games with each civilization on average. If we were to use only 1650 ELO and above on Definitive Edition for the last month, we'd only have around 100 games per civilization, which leads to outrageous results, like Japanese being the worst on Arabia and Celts being the best, thanks to the heroic efforts of one player in particular. The fact I'm calling these the worst civilizations as well doesn't mean they necessarily need a buff. More likely, they're just not well suited for 1 vs 1 games, or land maps in particular. You'll notice a lot of them specialize in non-meta strategies, so if anything you could argue these civilizations are just misunderstood, and even the worst civilization we'll see still has about a 40% win rate. With all that out of the way, let's get the list started at number 5 with the Byzantines. A common theme in the civilizations appearing in the video is going to be that they don't have a strong economy bonus that helps in Dark or Feudal Age. Generally, it pays to be aggressive, taking map control and putting your opponent on the defensive, while Byzantines do the opposite and specialize in playing that defensive role, with more building HP and cheap counter units. Long term, their tech tree's flexibility can lead to a solid late game, but the problem is getting there. They're a bit unlucky in that their discount bonus is for units that are all weak at raiding, which hurts them a lot on Arabia in particular, especially if it tempts you to overinvest in those units early on. As a time-honored favorite civilization for new players, you might think that's somehow influencing the result, but everyone plays more or less against their own skill level, so that shouldn't actually be a factor. And if anything, they do best in sub-1000 ELO games, though still with below average results. They're a comfortable Civ, and I think they're most people's favorite at one point, but not a great 1v1 Arabia Civ if you're playing ranked. Next up, at number 4, we have the Italians. Last year, they were actually number 5, with a very similar win percentage. They're the second least picked civilization on Arabia, which seems a bit odd at first. They have fully upgraded crossbows and knights in Castle Age, with a unique tech to increase archer armor and a unique archer unit with a bonus against cavalry. They even buck the trend by having a Dark Age bonus, which is their cheaper advancing, and by Castle Age that bonus can add up to a decent amount. It's possible that bonus isn't being used to its full potential, but at the end of the day they're just a bit too slow out of the gate and a bit too weak in Feudal Age to thrive on the 1v1 ladder. Moving on, at number 3 we have the Turks. They managed to dodge being on the list last year, but with Khmer and Vietnamese being improved so much, it makes sense to see some new civs at the bottom. I really see two different issues for Turks in 1 vs 1. The first is their early game. You just don't normally have enough villagers on gold for 20% faster gold collection to make a significant impact on rushing. Increases to farming or wood collection are just much more impactful. They do okay in the mid game with fully upgraded crossbows and knights, plus even camels for some extra value. But of course then they fall off the dreaded gold cliff, where after they run out of gold they're left with feudal age skirmishers, pikemen and mangonels, against often much better versions of those units. The 43% win rate is still a bit surprising to me given how solid their mid game appears, but like Italians, what looks good on paper doesn't always translate to success in practice. Next up in number 2 is the Koreans. They were hit pretty hard by a tower nerf in Definitive Edition, reducing tower HP in Feudal Age on top of a prior increase in wood cost, and in Definitive Edition they also took away the Koreans faster building bonus when making fortifications. In exchange, Koreans got a wood discount for units, but overall they're struggling to really find an identity beyond just making towers. I guess they're partly an archer civilization now, with a wood discount and fully upgraded arbalest, and the war wagon is certainly seeing more interest, but again in practice they're just not keeping up with a lot of civilizations because of a lack of early game economy and an obvious game plan. Before we get to the worst 1v1 civilization, let's first take a look at a few dishonorable mentions that almost made the list. The first is the Malay. Technically, according to the numbers, they should be number 5, but a lot of that is from a single patch where their faster advancing bonus was bugged. Outside of that, they're not lighting the Arabia world on fire, and they're a tricky sieve to play, but definitely don't belong in bottom 5. 
Another that almost made the list was the Tatars. It's interesting to see they don't do better in short games, as their early food bonus theoretically helps delay farms by letting them get food longer from herdables. We see that help them on maps like Mountain Pass, but not Arabia, it seems. With Thumbring coming in for free in Castle Age, an additional hill bonus, free Parthian tactics, and a unique tech to increase their cavalry archer's armor, it's very obvious that their specialty is cavalry archers, which unfortunately take quite a while to both upgrade and build their numbers. Unlike archers and crossbows, where you can start making them in Feudal Age and build up the numbers, you actually don't get access to cavalry archers until Castle Age, so they understandably struggle on open maps. But it's now time to reveal the worst 1 vs 1 civilization in Definitive Edition for 2020, and that's the Portuguese. They were bottom 3 last year with almost an identical win rate, but the two lower civilizations from last year, Khmer and Vietnamese, got shiny new bonuses, leaving the Portuguese with the dubious distinction of being number 1. Like a lot of the civilizations on the list, quite a few of their bonuses are geared towards just water maps or the Imperial Age. Their team bonus is also completely useless in 1 vs 1s. It's not even just an Arabia thing, they're right at the bottom when the results across all maps are included as well. Their 15% gold cost discount on units sounds fine on paper, especially with fully upgraded Castle Age crossbows and knights, and even organ guns can be surprisingly strong in large numbers. But one sieve has to be number one, and in this case it looks like it's them. So those are the worst 1v1 civilizations on Arabia as of 2020. All of the win rates are taken from aoestats.io, which is linked in the description. The creator of the site is paying for the server costs out of pocket, and if you want to help him keep it running, consider buying him a coffee. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.